Welcome back. Today we're going to show you some pretty interesting technology, but before we do that, let's take a look at this iPad that we did a video of, what, a month, month and a half ago? Check it out. I haven't ha I've, it hasn't been charged in so long, yet it still holds a freaking charge. It's been running this entire time. I've never shut it off. This thing has an amazing battery. I mean, this really is crazy. It's still holding a freaking charge. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to show you. What I'm here to show you is this. We're going to turn an ordinary Windows 98 PC, like the one we have here, into a touch screen computer. Yes, we're going to bring it into the new millennium. We're going to give it a new lease on life. We're going to put Windows 10 on. I'm just kidding. But we are going to make it touch screen. And here's how we're going to do it. Check this out. This is a Keytech Magic Touch overlay device. These are manufactured and still continue to be made to this day for the assistive and adaptive technology sector. The primary purpose of this device is to allow individuals with physical and cognitive disabilities uh, to use a computer or to at least have some connection with a computer device. So this device was used in a, I believe it was a, um, a special needs classroom when it was new. And the student would, um, I'm not really sure if this is kind of a busy activity for them or if they were actually developing some functionality um, or some re rehabilitating, I guess, as a result. But what it would do is it would allow them, if they did not have the ability to use a mouse for one reason or another, either they couldn't associate mouse movement with screen activity, what it would allow them to do is directly touch icons and directly manipulate objects on screen with their fingers. Uh, I've seen this thing in use many times and that's pretty much what I saw happening. They were running um, special needs software that would give them some kind of um, skill and drill type work, you know. They would hear a, a prompt, for example, you know, touch the elephant, and they would raise their hand and they would touch the elephant, you know. Select the pink circle, click on the pink circle. And that's, it, it was kind of a, I, I want to say that it was, a, it, was an, it was an activity that would build cognitive skills, if that makes any sense at all, but anyway. So that's pretty much what this is meant for. Um, although they are sold, I believe, as um, uh, inexpensive point of sale type uh, display modification majiggers. But anyway, um, we're going to install it on a Windows 98 PC because it is actually meant to run on something this old. Um, so Keytech is still in business and they still have the drivers available for download for this device and I'm going to show you where to get them. Um, so if you happen to find one of these on eBay and you want to just play around with it, make sure you get the interface box and not just here. Let's, let's, let's disconnect the, uh, the, the tie wrap here. So how this comes is when you buy the display you get to choose what kind of an interface you want with it. So this is just how it comes. It has this little connector on the end here. It's, a sim it's basically an RJ45 connector. And uh, you've got this interface box that uh, is most of the electronics are in, are in this box here. And this is what you connect to your computer. Uh, you can actually buy a USB or a serial one. So let's give it a try. Now the first thing we need to do is obtain a driver. To do that, we're going to use our iMac. And I'm going to move this. <laughs> Geiger counter, We're, we don't need that right now. And uh, more on that later. <laughs> this is, there's going to be a video to, to go along with this at some point. I just haven't decided how I'm going to do it. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, now let's go to magictouch.com and we're going to find the downloads link and Magic Touch add on. And we've got the Pro E X controller, right? I think it says that right on it. Pro E. Yes. 
All right, let's, uh, oh, here it is, Pro E controller. I'm just gonna select that. We're gonna select the Windows 95 98 driver. So obviously, there's a huge problem with this display, and I'm gonna show you what that problem really is and what it entails. Um, it's, it's kind of obvious. It, for those of you who are uh, with it right now, you get what I'm gonna say. The accuracy on these things is, is just, is, is comically bad. Um, we're gonna transfer it to a zip disk. The accuracy is so bad on this thing uh, because of its, the distance is so great between the surface of the, of the display or the image and the tip of your finger. I mean, it, it's just, well, you, you, gotta, you gotta just see how bad this is. Now, obviously you could buy an LCD and, or a CRT display with a built-in touch screen and those are more accurate but they cost a lot more which is why this was purchased and this can be used with any monitor so if the monitor blows up which they often did you could just move it to another monitor this thing I think I moved like a dozen times from one display to the next and it was like every year it was on a different monitor um, way back in the day I think I, I, I last installed this seven years ago and it's been sitting in a box collecting dust ever since so let's get our driver installed first, and then we're going to um, to, uh, to move forward with it. So he here's the driver. We're just going to install it from the uh, from the disk. I believe we have to run um, touch 232.exe. Oh, you know what? It wants it installed first. So let's let's get that done get that done first. I've got the, uh, you see my shiny face here. How you doing? Um, all right, I got the, the jungle theme applied. So let's, um, let's, let's connect this up. So I plugged it into what I believe to be is COM2. We're going to find out in a minute if that's correct. Um, yeah. Although this light, I'm not I don't remember if this is supposed to be on or not. We'll see what happens. Let me grab the uh, tripod, which is over there. And I'm going to hopefully make you guys less seasick. In just a second. Alright, All right, now you got a kind of a bird's eye view. There we go. Alright. Look at that. Just trying to make your lives that much easier. So, oh, oh, we have some activity here. It's lighting up. All right. The jungle theme going on. Okay, it sees it. Got our driver database looking for driver stuff happening here. So I'm going to answer the question that you're all going to want the answer to. Yes, these come in many different sizes. This one was usually used on a 15 inch monitor. So I used to have to keep a handful of 15 inch monitors kicking around just for this thing. Yes, it can be used with a, tut with a, um, with a flat screen very easily. It doesn't matter as long as it's able to be calibrated it'll be fine. In fact this works better obviously on a flat screen because on a CRT which has a significant bow in the middle um, the accuracy is greater in the middle than it is on the edges because of the distance between the... yeah. So we're gonna hit next. I'm going to for a driver that I have on disk there is no specify location. It's going to be in our uh, zip drive. And that's it right there. Okay, here we go. Let's look in that folder, see what it comes up with. Found the driver, hit next.
Alright. Okay, at this point we should have some touch screen functionality, and we do. It's working. Alright, stop it, stop it, stop it. Yeah, I, I believe this is a resistive touch device. Okay, driver is installed. But you can see that when I put my finger here, the, the cursor is over there. So it's like really off. Badly off. More so over here than it is. Okay, so we got to do something about that. We're going to run this Touch 232 application. We should have our calibration tool. So we're going to press the... Uh, we're going to calibrate it. So this bases it on where you are sitting your height because the further you are, the further the touchscreen surface is from the actual surface of the display, that's not, of course, accounting for the half inches or so of glass that the display contains. The farther you are from the shadow mask itself, the less accurate it is, um, and the more susceptible it is to inaccuracies based on your height and seating position. So what I used to do when we actually use this at work, is I would have the actual student calibrate it. I would, I would sit the student down and I would ask the student to press the targets with his or her finger. That way the student's physical size position would be taken into account and it would be more... because usually it was one or two kids that would use it. And then I would instruct the teacher on how to recalibrate it if there is any issue at all. So that's how I used to deploy this thing. And oops, screw that up. See, I can't calibrate the damn thing. I think I screwed up. Let's try it again. Okay. There we go. It's done. So now it's calibrated to my position, etc., etc. So if I were to, yeah, see now it's 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 not perfect, but I can actually manipulate the screen pretty easily. Um, so I have confirmed that this is in fact a resistive touch, as it as it doesn't rely. So I can touch it with um, with any object at all. In fact, I could use a pen, which I just showed you. I could use a CD case. Yep, I can use a CD case. I could use a stylus. Really anything. Um, does not obviously feature multi-touch ability. Now, my CRT, as a side note, this CRT is definitely starting to, to show its age. Um, I have a replacement CRT downstairs. Anyway, so we've got it working. And it's relatively functional. See if I can play any games. Let's take a look at um, Toaster Run. See, it's... Oh, I hit the wrong one. This is Zapper. There we go. Press New Game to begin. Hit New Game. Didn't I do that? Is an ostrich's eye bigger than its brain? I think it is. <coughs> yes. Did America ever give tax benefits to those who bathe regularly? No. Arabia did. Doing well. Was the first slave ship to reach America English? I'm going to say no. I was right. Has Jerry Springer been convicted of impersonating a police officer? I think that he might have been. The answer is no. Was Minnie Pearl the comedian's real name? I wouldn't know. So no. Yep, I was right. <laughs> is puzzleism a kind of religion? Sure. It's boxing. 
Was Benito Mussolini an artist before becoming at least a dictator? I think he was. You know, he was a school teacher. Do you have to be older than 35 to be president in the U.S.? Yes, you do. Was look. Oh, I ran out of time. So there you go. I mean, it's it's, it's relatively usable. All right. Well, that pretty much concludes our video. Um, I'm going to now uninstall this thing, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it now, but I don't want it. So um, we're going to just kind of uninstall it now. Yeah, I gotta um, I gotta swap this display out. This thing is it's it's actually starting to to shadow. And I thought initially that it might be a bad, um, a bad uh, cable, but I don't know. I'm starting to think it's not. So, I think I swapped the cable out on it. It didn't work. How do we uninstall this thing? Well, we basically just unplug it. So I figured, why not, why not combine the unveiling of my new monitor? Uh, in this video. So some of you who aren't vintage computer enthusiasts might not fully understand what I just did here. So, you know, CRTs are an integral part of the vintage computer experience. Um, they, that nice warm glow and all that radiation they put out is just, um, it's part of the experience, you know. The massive size of this, this thing weighs about as much as a car. and. All right, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's heavy, very heavy, and it's enormous. It goes as well here. I'll show you what I mean. It's huge. It just it goes all the way back to that point. It's about as deep as the case itself. So putting a, a, a flimsy little LCD monitor on this thing is just blasphemy, in my opinion, and uh, and that is my opinion totally. Anyway. <clears throat> This monitor, I'll tell you about this monitor, was actually purchased, um, I want to say, in, in the spring of 2006, 2006, and it was used for maybe a couple of months, and then it was packed away and forgotten about. So it's been sitting in storage for nearly 10 years. Um, it was used for a couple of months, and that was it. So this is probably one of the newest else, uh, CRT displays that, that you'll ever find. One of the least used. And being from 2006, it was made absolutely towards the very end of the CRT desktop monitor era. This particular model, I believe, was released in 2003. So it's a believable original equipment replacement to what could have been used with our Windows 98 PC. It's believable enough. So let's fire it up. Oh, do I want to plug it in? That might that might help too. Hold on. Yeah, just get under my desk here and find the cords. There they are. Alright. There's the and plug it in. Okay. Ow. That hurt. It's kicking in. I can hear it. I can feel the glow and the radiation. Oh, look at how bright that is and how crisp and clean. Whoa! That's an improvement over that old 1995 Sony I had. Jeez. All right, we're going to bring the brightness down just a, a wee bit. Um, all digital controls. I love it. I love it. I've got to send... Oh. Wrong button. I've got to center it now. Yeah, this one, um, I was supposed to throw this thing away something like nine years ago. And I just, I never got around to it. It's entirely what it is. I never got around to it, and now the company that recycles my e waste from work won't take these <laughs> without me paying them. So, I'm like, well, Rather than pay to dispose of a perfectly good CRT monitor, why don't I just bring it home and reconnect it, put it back to use for once. So that's what I did. I put it to use, and we're going to use it. We're going to use it like it was meant to be used. We're going to use it 
to uh, display images. But it's perfect, no burn-in. It still has that new monitor smell when you fire it up. Um, it's got that, that acrid, plasticky, weird, just funky odor. I can smell it already. All new monitors smelled that way. If you ever went into a computer lab that had just been set up back in the uh, early 2000s, late 90s, hell, even before, you would have this this odor that, that these new electronics would produce. It was just very unique. I can only put it that way. It was very unique and, and not entirely unpleasant. It was the smell of a new computer, which is something that we don't really have anymore. I mean, my new laptop, it didn't really have any odor to it that was spectacular. But, yeah, seriously, guys, I mean, it, it was a thing, you know? So, I think I have it pushed to the highest. See, look at how crystal clear that image is. We're going to bring the resolution up to uh, 1024, which it can support, of course. And we're going to position it, reposition it. Now, these monitors will remember the positioning for each resolution you set it to. So if I drop it down to 800 by 600, it should resume. Let's look at the specs on this one. Um, I think I just looked them up. Here we go. So the specifications on this monitor, by the way, this is the AccuSync 700. Supports up to 1280 by 1024 at 66 hertz. Um, has a color temperature of 9300 or 6500 K, which is typical. Um, refresh rate, horizontal refresh rate is 71 kilohertz. That's pretty much. Oh yeah, how much power does it use? Power consumption. Um, standby is five watts, which is normal. 73 watts. You might think that this thing sucks up like 200 watts or some crap like that. It actually consumes up to 73 watts. Now, I have, right over here, I have a uh, Samsung LCD from about 2005. This is the one I was going to use with this PC, by the way. Let's see what it says. So this is a CRT, the big badass CRT. A 17-inch CRT from, from way back in the day. How does it rate compared to this flat screen? Um, well, the flat screen consumes... Oh, it doesn't say. You're too embarrassed. It doesn't say. But you're going to find that it's not that different. I mean... I'll look it up. I'll look up the, uh, the power consumption on this thing and see. Alright, so there's a difference of uh, a little bit. 34 watts power consumption and 1 watt standby. So, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference, but it's not a difference of a couple hundred watts, which is what, you know, which is what, uh, I don't want to say this because I, I kind of side with them, but the environmental energy star... Uh, Nazis want you to think. They want you to think that it's like you're going to bring down the power grid by having a CRT display in your house. Um, that's not always the case. Um, so the difference between about almost 40 watts. That's, that's a bit. It's a bit of a difference. All right, I'll admit it. Then again, the Sync Master. The NEC or the yeah, the NEC Sync Master is or the what's up? Samsung, whatever the hell it was called. Um, yeah, that is an old-fashioned um, fluorescent backlight model. So the new LED bottles will probably be significantly less. But um, <coughs> let's get back to what we were doing. The main difference, uh, sorry, the main benefit. There's actually a lot of benefits over um, from a, a CRT to an LCD or vice versa. The LCD does have less power consumption, of course, um, but the um, I think the CRT is a better image. I really do. Especially the older CRT, or the newer CRTs versus the older LCDs. 
So as the LCDs were coming of age and the CRTs were going out, you know, the CRTs definitely had, I, I believe, a more organic image, a better image quality. Of course, better black level, better contrast by far. Um, I think we all knew that. <laughs> but yeah, that's all part of the vintage computer experience. And you, you know, when you're collecting vintage systems, it's always good, in my opinion, to have and use vintage display technologies because it really adds to the authenticity. And again, that's just me being me. So let's drop it down 800 by 600 and see if it remembered. Yes, it did. It did remember. Now we're going to drop it down to 640 and see what that looks like. And now you can really start seeing all the scan lines and stuff. <clears throat> I'm going to bring it up to its max. One of the reasons I had this thing dropped down to 800 by 600 was because the previous display, it didn't quite display it very well. I mean, the display was dying, and it whether it's fixable or not is not subject to this video. But, um, nevertheless, I feel like I have to keep, like, in interjecting um, disclaimers in everything I say because of all the feedback I've been getting. And it's like, well, actually, and you missed, and you didn't say, and the actually is, and it's like, guys, come on, give me a break. I'm just doing this in my free time. Lay off. But anyway, <laughs> we're back. Hey, my speakers are off. Did I unplug them? I must have. Anyway. So, I think that's it. I think that's all we're going to need today. Um, what did we do? We covered the uh, Magic Touch, Key, Key Tech Magic Touch overlay. By the way, this was made for a, um, I believe, a nominal screen size of 15 inches. It is definitely too small for the 17 inch. So, um, yeah, so there's that. And yes, so we replaced the CRT display with a, we're going to call this a, um, a barn find CRT. It was one that was used very, very lightly and uh, lived a very easy life on a shelf in a closet. And now, facing the world, doing what it was built to do. Don't know how long it'll last because, you know, we've also got the fact that it was made during capacitor gate, uh, so it probably has some bad caps in it. I mean, if it blows up in a few weeks, I'll know. But, uh, okay. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.